Hello, my YouTube family. Welcome again to another live video. In this one, we have a very interesting topic. Speaking about how most people in this world, they want to see you down and out. And actually not just you. Anyone who they feel like is progressing in their life in a certain area or field to where they're getting close to where they're at and they're making them feel less. They're making them feel inferior or as though whatever they think their position or their social standing is, is being taken away from them. So then they want to hold you down. And a lot of people don't want you to know this. But I'm sure many of you throughout your life, you've seen it yourself. This really is how it is. Most people in this world do not care about you. They don't care about how you feel, how things are going on for you in your life. They don't care if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're doing good. Or rather, they will care if you're doing good. If they feel like that threatens them and their image, or rather their false image, because if it was real and not just manipulation, then they wouldn't be too bothered about you because they'd actually be on their mission, following their purpose, their direction. But a lot of people in this world, they're constantly scrolling through social media, comparing their lives, comparing what they have, and feeling like no matter what they do, they just can't measure up, like they're never going to be good enough. So then they start to hate and envy people. They may even go so far as to try to sabotage your life. And it's because they're envious and they're jealous. And sometimes it's the closest people to you. It could be your own family. And you will notice it because while they're acting like they're by your side and they're there to help you, they're never actually there. They're never actually supporting you with things in your life and trying to make it better for you. And instead, what tends to happen is when you figure this out, when you realize that all the while your narcissistic family members, your narcissistic friends, maybe even your boss, when you realize that the entire time they never even cared about you. All they were concerned about is their false image and maybe they were using you to prop it up and to make them look good so that they could feel good about themselves as though they're important. When you figure this out, that's when they will scapegoat you. That's when they will make it like you did something wrong. And this could have been something from years ago. But then they will bring it up as though it happened yesterday. When in actuality, the reason why they're bringing things up from the past, whether it's real or just something they made up, is because you have threatened their false image. You've revealed that the entire time, all of those years that you spent with them, the entire time they never cared about you. It was just all about themselves. And when you reveal that, 
they fear that you're about to expose their false image. And then they've got to tear you down. And even while they're doing that, they may be lying to you, future faking, manipulating you, gaslighting you, but still acting as though they're trying to help you, as though they're good people, as though they want to improve things for you. They want you to be better. And that's typically what evil people do. Just like the devil, he will tempt and entice you. He will manipulate and deceive you. I believe it says something in the Bible about how the, the devil's greatest uh, lie or deception is making people believe he doesn't exist. And it's the same thing with these narcissists. They will make you believe that they don't even exist as though the false character is who they actually are. But at some point, you just got to stop and look at what you've been going through, what has happened in your life over the past few months or years. Because you will notice that these narcissistic family members, friends, co-workers, bosses, whoever it may be, they're not supporting you in anything positive in your growth and development. And instead, what they are doing is trying to bring you into destructive things, maybe drinking alcohol, doing drugs. Maybe they're abusive. They're putting you down. But then at the same time, they're racked as though they're trying to help you. The degenerates are engaged in a lot of negative, destructive things. Not only that they're putting on to you, but that's what they're doing themselves. Because just look at them in their own lives. What are they actually doing that's positive and productive? Do they have a healthy relationship? A functional family system? Are they doing well in their jobs? Are they progressing? Are they advancing? Are they engaged in personal growth? Are they always learning new things? Or are they not doing any of that? And are they pushing back on what you're trying to accomplish, what you're progressing in? Are they not supporting you in any of that? Or they're trying to affect your confidence, they're trying to sabotage your life. And at the same time, they're not doing anything positive or productive in their lives. Which again, confirms that what they have is a false image. And sometimes they can make it look good on the outside. They can make it seem like, yeah, we got this picture perfect family. We got this good job, a nice home. When that's all just a facade, it's a false image to extract attention and validation, often from other people who are just as fake as them, and sometimes they can't even see it. But that's really what this is. Most people in this world do not care about you or anyone else. They're only in it for themselves. They're only in it for the validation that they get from a false image. If they can look good, then they can feel good about themselves as though they're important, as though they matter in this world. And not only that, but it may also be to provide a, a form of comfort and security. They want to feel comfortable and secure, maybe in a nice home, a nice car, or so that they can go on vacations. But the irony is, they can't even enjoy any of that. These types of people are always miserable. 
you can take them to the nicest fine dining restaurant and they will have a problem with the waiter, a problem with the food, they will complain about everything. No matter where they go, no matter where you take them. And yet, that's often what these types of people are striving for. Because the reality is they can't actually enjoy anything directly. They have to experience it by curiously through someone else. They have to try and provoke envy or jealousy in someone to make it look like they're having a great time, they're living their best lives, when really they're not. Which is very different from how we may be, where it's like, I don't know, myself, as you may have seen on my Instagram, Narc Survivor YouTube, I do upload pictures and videos of my travel sometimes. But I enjoy things directly. As you may know, I'm an empath, a highly sensitive person. But I like to share it with my viewers as well. Because I know many of you are like myself. You like to see people happy. You like to see people enjoying their lives and not just putting on a show, a false image. And that's why sometimes on my Instagram, you may see negative things as well. You may see problems that I've had to endure. Because, yeah, I mean, while I may be in a positive mood, 99% of the time, I do go through bad times as well. And, of course, there's always problems. There's always inconveniences. That's normal. That will happen in life. But these types of people, these narcissists, they just want to put on a show. Whatever makes them seem desirable or attractive, powerful and important. All just to support this false self. And that's all they're really trying to do. And they look at it like... They can either use you to support that if you're willing to go along with it and validate the false self. Or otherwise, they can abuse and destroy you to make themselves feel powerful and superior. And sadly, this is most people in the world today. They're prideful. They're arrogant. They're egotistical. They're not connected to a soul. So it has nothing to do with love or connection. They don't even care about that. When they have friendships, when they get into relationships, even with their family, none of this has anything to do with love or connection. A lot of times they don't even know each other. They might say sometimes, how are you? They don't actually care about how you feel. They don't care about your feelings or needs. They don't care about any of that. And of course, this is clearly, clearly evident from statistics that show that the two most common illnesses in the world are mental illnesses, which are anxiety and depression. Most people feel like they are alone. They're unheard, they're unseen. This is why when you go on social media, everyone wants to be heard. Everyone wants to be seen. They want to get as many views and likes as they possibly can just for themselves, to stroke their own egos, to make themselves feel important. And it's just everywhere these days, no matter where you look. It's on YouTube, everyone wants to be an influencer. They act like they actually care about people when it's just all about themselves. It's all about what they can get out of it. And you see it as well when you go on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. It's everywhere. Narcissism is taking over the world. It's just a bunch of people who only care about themselves. Or rather, not even themselves. It's all about their false self, which is separate from them. 
They don't even care about their true self. They're not interested in love, relationships, connection, making this world better. I mean, of course, why else would, what is it, one third of the world's population be experiencing poverty and starvation? The reality is that one to two percent of the world's population are empaths. That's how rare it is where a person can experience a effect of empathy, where they have the ability to connect to a, another human being. Everyone else, they are dysfunctional. And there is another statistic that I've seen by a family clinic that reveals that 96% of families are dysfunctional. Notice how that lines up quite well. 96% of families are dysfunctional. And also another statistic revealed that one to 2% of the world's population are empaths. And there's also more research, more studies that shows that empathy has dramatically decreased since 1979. And yet it's like, why is no one talking about this? Why don't we ever hear about this? I mean, it's never on the news. And actually what is on the news is just so many negative things. And I think it's because most people don't care. They don't care if people care about each other or not. They don't want you to care about them. They want you to care about the false image. Just validate it, make them feel like there's something desirable or powerful. That's all they really care about. And if you go against that, against the false image, whether it's of your friends, your family members, your workplace. If you go against that and you try to be real, you will be targeted. You will be scapegoated. Because they don't care about anything real. They gave up on that a long time ago. They accept it as a child that no one cares. They realized that long before we did. Because remember, these types of people, they are high in cognitive empathy. Which means that while they may not be able to feel what we feel, they can read into people's intentions and motives. Which means that they likely already know exactly who you are. Yes, they already know that you're a good person, that you care, that you're empathic. They're already aware of that. And you've just got to look at it like this. Why are they going out of their way to corrupt you? Everything they're doing is the opposite. It's backwards. It's abnormal. They're going against your moral qualities and virtues instead of supporting that. They're trying to corrupt you. They're trying to make you just like them. Because the reality is that this world is corrupt. We're surrounded by corrupt people everywhere we go. They're in possessions of power. And a lot of their followers and supporters are corrupt as well. People in this world are not in harmony with each other. They're all against each other. To many of you, you may actually think that your friends, your family, your boss, your co-workers, your community, 
the government? Do you actually think that they care about you? That they're trying to give you the best quality of a life? They're trying to support you? They're not. And you've just got to look at it like this. On average, people spend about eight hours a day working. That's one third of their day. It's maybe one quarter of their life, maybe more. Especially if you include that they go to school, they study before they get a job. But then not only that, before they go to work, they might have to have a shower, get ready, and then they've got to drive there. And then they drive home afterwards. Then they've got to pre prepare the night before, they've got to sleep early. So pretty much most people their entire life revolves around working, going to a nine to five job. And what do they get from that? Most people are on minimum wage. If they even have a job. And even then, once they get their earnings each month, they might go to the shop to buy something. And then they've got to pay more money to the government because then they're taxed on that or whatever they buy. There's value added tax. And then on top of that, you also have to pay for rent or for your own home. And then you've got all of the bills to pay as well. Then you've got to think about transport, fuel for your car. And then there's car insurance. Then there's the car tax. And also there's income tax. So even though you work for like eight hours a day, your entire life revolves around work. And this is so you can help to build up the community. So you're pretty much a slave of the government already before you even get to the income tax where the government takes a share of that money. So they're taking a share of you, of your, pretty much your slavery to them. Anything you do, you get tax on it. And yet you really think that the government cares about you. Or even your own boss, that your boss pays you such a small amount of money for the job that you're doing, for the amount of hours that you're working compared to how much they're earning. And then you look around and it's like, look at how many people just waste their lives drinking every week, drowning their sorrows, taking drugs, engaged in so many self-destructive activities. And you've got to think, where's their family? Where's their friends? Most often their friends are the ones who bring them into that. And people actually think that these people care about them. It looks like all people care about is having a good time distracting themselves from who they actually are and the reality. That's how it seems it really is. And when you actually do care about people, when you care about your friends, what happens, they all turn against you. They alienate you from that social group. You care about your family, about who they actually are, They're trying to make things better, they scapegoat you. you. 
care about the community. They find a way to say there's something wrong with that as well. It's like now you're like some hipster, a neo-Nazi, a perfectionist. They've always got something to say. Yet why are they the ones who are in the authority? Where they're telling you what to do. Because are they good role models? Sometimes you just got to look at people's lives. Look back at what they've been doing for the past few years. What are they trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? And what are they doing for you? Are they supporting and encouraging you in a positive way? Or are they trying to destroy you? And you've got to think about that. Why are they trying to destroy something good? And at the same time, what are they doing? Promoting a false image for themselves. I should tell you that people do not care about anything real. They're only interested in supporting the fake. And why? Because maybe they already know at some level that most people don't care anyway about anything real. But not only that, but because they don't believe in themselves, they gave up on themselves a long time ago. You didn't. And that's why you're the one who scapegoated, targeted. That's why you're the one who is watching these videos every day. You're trying to learn more. You're trying to understand. You're trying to bet yourself. This is why you're the one who's doing that and they're not. Because they're not about that. They're just pretending. They don't care about people being in harmony with each other. Supporting and encouraging each other. Towards something positive and mutually beneficial. They don't care about any of that. Most people are only in it for themselves. Most people in this world. They actually do not care about each other. It's just about their own egos. And they view you as a threat. Because they see you trying to better yourself and improve your life. And they're not even thinking about what you can contribute to other people's lives. To communities, to society. They don't care about none of that. It's just all about their ego, their pride feeling superior this is why the world is the way that it is today where 99% of the world's wealth is shared among maybe a few hundred people and then like one third of the world is starving in poverty I mean just think about how easy it would be to end poverty around the world that could be fixed tomorrow all that would have to be done is for the richest people in the world to just share a fraction of their wealth if it just one percent of everything they have and not only that, but by doing that, that would make them richer. Because then it would bring in more jobs, more people would be in work. They would be contributing more to society. Which means that they would have more to spend. So that would actually make the elites, the richest people in this world, richer. Which is how you know that they don't actually care about money. 
even though they may have a lot of it, they don't actually care that much about it. What they're more concerned with is power and control, keeping people down, keeping us naive and aware of what's actually going on. And why are they so concerned about power and control? Well, it's because the elites, the wealthiest people in this world, the most powerful people, believe it or not, but they are actually very insecure. And the reason why is because most of them are fraudsters. They're con artists. They cheated a lot of people to get to that position. And that's why they're so insecure. And that's why they're able to manipulate and control everyone because they're miserable. They can't find satisfaction in anything they have. So that's how it's so easy for them to do that. Because <clears throat> you've got to think, if they wanted to make a lot more money, it would be so easy for them to do that. I mean, all they would have to do is just give a small share of their wealth to the poorest people in this world. It would develop so many countries. And by them investing, they would then get a return and it would make them richer. They don't do that because they don't care about money. Money is not important to them. And some of them, they print the money. They can have as much money as they want. They're concerned about power and control. I mean, just look at Elon Musk. How much did he pay for Twitter? What was it, $40 billion? Is Twitter even worth that much? Again, it reveals he's not that concerned about money. They're seeking power and control. Just like Donald Trump, he's trying to run for president again. He's already worth four or five billion dollars. But the money's not enough. Power and control is far more valuable than the money. I mean, when you think about it, money is a tool. provide us with freedom and security and what makes the elites the most powerful people in this world feel secure because remember they're very insecure they feel secure when everyone is unaware when they can manipulate and control us just like a typical narcissist. So we are all their source of security and stability by keeping us off balance, by making us insecure. And yes, if you look at it, they're doing everything in their power to make us insecure. It's everywhere you look. 
everything these days it's all about perfectionism it's all about beauty physical appearance having an image it's not about our actual qualities it's not about love they're just promoting narcissism so essentially they're making people insecure and they do this through movies the songs products social media and all of this is intentional they know exactly what they're doing they're making people insecure because this then gives them power and control over us which then provides them with a source of security and stability and if you really look at it a lot of the billionaires in this world they're not even that concerned about their physical appearance or their possessions or the things that they have they're not even going around like a lot of millionaires do bragging and boasting about it showing it off i mean just look at elon musk he sold all of his mansions all of his possessions he quite clearly does not care about his image very few of them do what they're more concerned about is power and control they want to make people feel insecure so that they can feel secure within themselves but even then it's just an illusion and this trickles down throughout society it's not just them who are doing that and who are like that but it's contagious a lot of people in this world they're disconnected they're detached they're not connected to themselves they don't even care about what they're putting out or about how you see them it's all just about establishing power and control over you I mean remember all they have is a false image but they're not really even that concerned about that but then many of them they do also have a false sense of pride that egotistical and they want your validation but that's the thing how are they going to get your validation if you're working on yourself you're successful you're doing well of course they have to use a false character to get that because once you're aware you're awake you recognize the abuse how are they going to get that from you and not only that but they know that if you're doing well for yourself you're just going to move on you're going to leave them behind you're going to forget about them and let's say you're successful you've got a good job a business you earn a lot of money you've got a nice home a family children that you love and take care of and you're going to want it to be healthy and functional and like anything that you went through before of course they already know they're not going to be be a bit be, be they're, they're not going to be a part of that they're not going to be involved what's going to happen is 
you're going to be in some gated community somewhere with lots of security, keeping them out. Your family, your kids are going to be protected. You're not going to let them know anything about your life. They're never going to have any contact with you because they already know what they are. They already know what they've done. They already know that they are abusive, that they're evil people. So, of course, they already know you're not going to want them involved in any of that. You're going to shut them out. And that's why typically they won't let it get to that point where you do manage to become independent and you build a life of your own. And the last thing they want to see is you doing well, you're successful, you've got a healthy, functional family. That's just going to remind them of just how foul and corrupt they are to where they couldn't establish that with you. But even if you do manage to get close to achieving that, they're just going to come back in to sabotage it. Well acted and so they're on your side, they're trying to help you. But then they'll minimize it, they'll act like it's nothing good. It's not that great. And then they'll just try and bring it down. Because remember... Most people in this world have a false image. It's ego-based. Just to make themselves feel superior. They're not really about any of that for real. When they see you doing it for real, they don't like it. They want to destroy it. Because then you're shining a light on them. Because it's like... If you look at their lives and what they're doing, how much progress have they made in the last few years? Have they actually done anything? So then it's like, how can you go off and achieve that without them? How can you become successful? How can you build a healthy and functional family? And you've got a husband or wife who loves you children who look up to you how is that possible and they could never achieve that and they may look like sometimes as they're spreading this false narrative about you that they're worried about what other people think but actually if you look at it I mean all of the things that they get involved in It's actually just all about how they see themselves and what they deem to be a source of power. What they think makes them look good. Because you may look at it like you're drinking lots of alcohol. You're going out every night. I mean, that doesn't look so good to me. But then it's all just how they see themselves whatever they think looks good for them. So essentially, it's all a delusion. It's all just whatever they've made it up to be in their minds. And they just look at it as though you're either a part of it or you're not. You're either with them or you're against them. And there is no in the middle, there is no in between. You're either their supporter or you're their enemy, their opponent. And again, they already know it's no competition. That's why they will cheat. They will try to sabotage you. Because they already know they can't compete with you. They already know you're good. You're better than them. They know you're the healthy, functional one. That's why they're trying to corrupt 
you. That's why they're trying to corrupt you. Again, back to the elites, most powerful people in this world. That's why they're trying to corrupt us. That's why, because if you look back the last few decades, everything that's been changed, everything that's been reversed, turned around is for a reason. It's to corrupt us, to make us impure. This is why now it's all about alcohol, nightclubs, even a lot of the music these days. It's so toxic. It's always about drinking, violence, doing drugs. And even the movies. Just look at the narrative narratives that they're pushing in the movies today. It's just everywhere you look. They're trying to corrupt us. They're trying to bring us down. And a lot of people these days, they're thinking it's cool because they're making it out as though this is a trend that we should follow. They're trying to make it seem cool. Now it's cool to be antisocial. It's cool to be a degenerate. Someone who has lots of tattoos and piercings to where you look like a thug. You look like someone who's corrupt. Yeah, that's cool these days. It's cool to listen to all of this garbage music. It's cool to take drugs, drink alcohol, smoke weed. This is cool these days. This is what they're pushing, especially on the youth. They've got to get it into their minds while they're young. Because then that constructs their identity. And this is why they do it through technology as well. Through phones and computers, social media. They're pushing this out to the youth. And just look at the effect that it's having. Look at the research, the studies, the statistics. All of the suicides that are committed among the youth. How many of them are depressed? All of the things that they're going through. All of these mental illnesses that never seem to be around just a few decades ago. And then also look at how in the schools they teach all of this nonsense. What they don't teach about is social skills, finances, psychology, or mental health. I mean, I would have thought, if anything, these should be the only things that we are taught in school before anything else. And once you piece all of these things together, it all makes perfect sense what they are trying to do. They're trying to keep us down. They're trying to control us. And before you go off and try to wake people up, it's too late, they're already brainwashed. They're just gonna look at you like you're the problem. Because you're going against the agenda. Everyone else is following it, they're trying to fit in. Most of these people are asleep. 
they're not even real people, they're zombies. They're of such a low level of consciousness and awareness, they may as well not even exist. And that's through no fault of their own. They've been brainwashed. That's why they're that way. They've been damaged, corrupted by society. And that's why you can't get through to them. It doesn't matter what you do. And many of them, I do believe that they've sold their souls. It's already too late for them. And how do you know that someone has sold their soul? Well, they're going to try to get you to sell yours. When someone has sold their soul, when someone is corrupt, they're going to try to corrupt you. So all of these people that you see, the elites, the most powerful people in this world, why are they seeking power and control? Why do they need it so bad? It's because they're not going where you're going. When this life is over, over they're not going there. They're going to hell. And they know it. That's why they're trying to corrupt us. That's why they're trying to get us caught up in all this stuff. Because you've got to look at it like this. It doesn't really make much sense. Why is it so important in this world? If it's only for a short amount of time. And then after that we die. It's all over. Especially if. I mean, you know, because they they have all of this intelligence, all of this technology, this power. They're going to know. They're going to know a lot more than the rest of us do. Especially when you look at the CIA. All of the research that they've done, they're going to know. What happens to us after this life, they're going to have some idea. So why don't they reveal this information to us? Why don't they tell us how it is? But then when you look into things about aliens, they're keeping all of this from us. It's because they're not going there. And a person who sold their soul, they want you to give up as well. They want to keep you down. It's like there's crabs in the bucket mentality because they already know that they're not going there. So now they want to corrupt you. They want to hold you back. But this is the thing, if you are a chosen one, an empath, this is a problem that they have. Because if you are a true chosen one, as I've noticed, I've experienced it myself, there is nothing that they can do. Not all of them may realize it yet, but they actually can't corrupt you. They can't get you to sell your soul. And this is typically why you will be scapegoated, targeted, isolated. People will be kept away from you for that reason. Because they recognize that they can't corrupt you. They can't get you to sell your soul. And if you've got people on your side, then it's going to be that way for them as well. If they're around you, if they're in your corner, if they're under the wing of a chosen one, then they can't penetrate that. They can't get to them. That's why they've got to smear you and create this false narrative about you. They've got to make it look like you're the bad guy. You're the one who's evil. You're doing wrong. So yes, believe it or not, this is spiritual warfare. 
as it says in the Bible, 144,000. These are the chosen ones. These are the ones who, pretty much no matter what in this life, they go into heaven. And there is nothing and nobody in this world who can stop them. Which is why there's this narrative, there's this, uh, this agenda that they're pushing to make us look bad. So that people don't join us. Because even if you're not one of the 144,000, you're not a chosen one. That doesn't mean that it's all over for you. If you get around a chosen one, an empath, you raise your vibration. It's not too late for you. It's too late for them. That's why they're trying to corrupt us. They're trying to isolate us. I mean, just look at most people these days. They get around their friends. They're all just drinking every night, taking drugs, doing degenerate things, escapist, escapism. They're running from themselves, running from reality. It's all a part of the agenda. And don't just take my word for it. Research it yourself. Look into it. You will see what's really going on. Not many people talk about this. But once you have a spiritual awakening and you raise to a certain level of vibration, everything becomes perfectly clear. It all makes perfect sense. But they don't want you to know this. And it's because they're jealous. Just like the devil himself. Because of his pride, his arrogance, he wanted to be superior. He went against God. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's exactly like how it says in the Bible. Although, even just thinking about it now, it makes perfect sense. But yeah, when he left heaven, he wanted to drag everyone down with him. He wanted to corrupt us. He tries to tempt and entice us to manipulate us. And it's all about making it look like the devil, evil things. This is all cool. That's the agenda that they're pushing. What about being angelic? Being of God, why can't that be cool? Why can't that be a trend? Because they don't want you to go there. And why don't they want you to go there? Because it's good. And yet they can't go there. Because they they chose evil, they chose corruption. They'd rather just have this false image, look good, feel powerful in this world, rather than to be together with us in harmony, in love, after this life. And I know this is difficult to understand. This is how our entire lives, we were manipulated so easily by so many people. Because we just can't get our heads around it. It just doesn't make sense to us. Why would anyone do that? Because like, you look at yourself and it's like, you would never sell your soul. But this is exactly how it is for so many people in this world. This is what they're like. And this is why so many targets, it's like the first thing they want to do 
or even not straight away, but at some point, it's like they just want to take their own lives. They want to end it all rather than to be corrupted. But that's just that if you are a chosen one, that's not going to happen to you. No matter what they do to you on the surface, on the outside, your core is still going to be there. They can't destroy that. They can't take that away from you. No matter how many years they target you, they gang stalk you, that's always going to be you. You're always going to have that, that awareness, that consciousness. Because that's going with you when you die. That's your soul. But you can't sell your soul. But then also, I don't know what it is. I think some people... kind of like maybe the disciples when they chose to follow Jesus people get around a chosen one they accept their truth they repent they seek forgiveness they rise up I don't know what it's like they didn't have a soul before but now they do in all honesty I don't understand how that works even now it doesn't make complete sense to me and maybe that is possible if you do get around a chosen one and maybe that's why they want to sabotage us, alienate us, isolate us. Because otherwise, what would be the point? If it didn't make a difference by people being around us, by being in our space. If you just look at my channel, I'm sure that I have raised the vibrations for a lot of people. Just by displaying myself as the chosen one that I am. And I know sometimes I watch my own videos back. When I'm around a lot of people, maybe I'm at a mall, I'm in a city. And it's almost like it prevents me from being corrupted in that moment. It keeps me sane. It keeps me pure. So maybe there is some sense to that as well. That's why they don't want us to be around chosen ones. I mean, as for a chosen one, being around another chosen one, they might not care too much about that. Because it's like, you're already chosen. There's not really too much they can do about it. So that's how you may often see several chosen ones together. And they just let it happen. They don't really care. What, what they're bothered about is people who aren't chosen, people who aren't awake, getting around a chosen one. That's what they don't want to see. Because they don't want you to wake other people out. They don't want them to go where you're going after this life, which of course is the heaven. Instead, they want to bring everyone down. They want to make everyone like them to where they saw their souls, power, wealth, or whatever it was in this life. Some of them are poor, they don't have any money. They don't even have a good job or business, it's just, they've just got this false self. Or maybe they have a position where they're able to manipulate people, and that's good enough for them. Maybe that's what they sold their soul for, who knows? But yeah. This is really how it is. And a few years ago, I never thought I'd be saying this. But it really is spiritual warfare. That's actually what this is. And it's not just in your little community or city. 
but you're being targeted is far greater than that. Everyone in this world, pretty much, is a targeted individual. They're all under a smear campaign. They're all being gang stalked on a grand scale. And this is why, I mean, just look at the agreement of any app that you sign up to on your smartphone. You agree to let them have visual and auditory access to you through your camera, your microphone, on your phone, on your computer, your television, and even on that, um, what's that called now? I think Google has one and Apple has one as well. That speaker you can have in your home, it's always listening to you as well through the microphone. It's collecting data about you. All of these apps always are, they're always gang stalking all of us. We are all being gang stalked. We're all targeted. And it's all just to keep us down. But those of you who are chosen ones, you will be intensely targeted. Far more than just an average person. Because they don't want you to get this out there. They don't want everyone to know. But then, of course, at some level as well, they assume most people aren't going to believe you. That's how we're able to get on here and talk about this. Because they've already... They've already painted an image of us in movies and music and making like evil things seem cool, trendy. They've already painted an image of us to make us look crazy to when we're not meant to be believed. Like it's a novelty. Or like this is a false image as well. It's just meant to appear sexy or cool. It's far deeper than that. This shit is actually real. This is really how it is. Many of you who see this, it may not make perfect sense to you right now. You may think I'm losing your, I'm losing my mind. I'm crazy. You have to raise your vibration before you can begin to understand. You've got to spiritually awaken. That's when it will all begin to make perfect sense. Rather than just listening to me, you've got to go within yourself first and then you'll find the answers. It will tell you everything you need to know within yourself. You don't even need to listen to me. Take some time out away from the cities, practice mindfulness, meditate, start a vegan diet, research about what you can do to raise your vibration, and then come back to this video and watch it again. You will find that it makes perfect sense. Everything that I'm saying, it's true. This is actually what it is. And they don't want you to know. But a lot of things that they're saying, I mean, I'm not saying that everything in religion is true. Of course, yes, they did change a lot of things about it over the years. But the core of it, that core message behind all of it, it's true, it's real. There is actually a God, a higher power. And even what was said about Satan and his minions, and even when you go back to Adam and Eve, how Eve was tempted by the snake, she bit the for forbidden fruit, the apple. 
just look on the back of your phone if you've got an iPhone what do you see it's the forbidden fruit it's a bit an apple and we know this as well when you look at serial killers murderers these psychopaths they like to leave these little riddles these little puzzles for you to figure out and they can sensitize you to it as well and it's like most people can't even see it they can't even figure it out try and talk to them about it they'll say that you're crazy but they leave these little hints these little clues for those of us who do notice it kind of like the Illuminati the stuff that Kanye West often goes on about but I think you know he is uh, if you look at him he is a bit crazy sometimes especially when, when he's on stage I mean it really doesn't help to talk about it in that way and be that emotional we need to be grounded in good sense and logic when we're speaking about these things because yes even though the frequency of love it is greater than reason and logic right now we are still in this world but in physical form so we do need to be able to converse logically and rationally for other people to be able to understand and that's very important because that's a problem with a lot of tactics uh, targets as well is that they're made to appear crazy and you're really not helping yourself if you go off on one like that but yeah I'm telling you you don't just have to listen to me you can just go within yourself that's where you'll find the answers that's where you'll find everything that you need to know and just that self-awareness just being conscious of it every day that's what makes it grow especially when you, you focus on your heart chakra rather than just being all in your head I guess it's true What's always been said is that we should listen to our hearts rather than just going off of our minds because again love is a greater vibration than reason and not only that but if you research it our heart has thousands of times more electromagnetic power than our brains and also I believe it's the Chinese who believe that our gut is like our second brain all of this information is out there you've just got to do the work you've got to do the research and then it will make more sense to you I mean you just got to look at it like this we are on this rock this giant rock actually it's quite a small rock compared to other rocks in this world uh, in this universe or even in this galaxy and everyone's walking around like this is all that there is it's all about wearing the latest designer clothes having a luxury car looking like you're living your best life and no one's thinking about we're only on this planet for a few decades and then where do we go it's amazing how they could just dumb everyone down it's incredible how they do that and we don't ever even think to consider 
science shows this universe has been around for 16 billion years there's potentially an infinite infinite number of planets and galaxies stars and what were the only life they haven't found any other life any aliens it's almost like we are the center of the universe and not only that but if this planet the earth is just a few hundred miles closer or further away to where it's orbiting the sun then there wouldn't be any life on this planet at all and that's when you've got to wake up and think there is so much more to what we see we're just limited by our brains and we agree on everything we're taught everything from a very young age everything we think we know this is taught to us even like colors just as an example colors we're taught that something's black white green blue doesn't mean that it is it's just because we all agree on that we are limited by our brains by our eyes our senses just because you can see something you can hear it you can feel it you can touch it you can taste it you can smell it that doesn't mean that it's real it doesn't mean that it's actually there it's just your brain that's telling you that as you may think what about everyone else their brains are telling them that so that must mean it's real it's because we all agree on that and then if someone doesn't agree on it they're labeled crazy schizophrenic schizophrenic what if they're the only ones who aren't crazy who even knows what's actually out there this really is the matrix you think you're seeing something you think this world is there I mean even the elites the greatest scientists in this world they may think this is a world they may think that we're in some galaxy in a universe that could be all wrong every thing that they are studying researching it's all based on their brains take the brain away what have you got you can't perceive anything and yet it's like we're so grandiose so narcissistic to believe that everything that this brain perceives is correct now just think about that for a moment we think our brains are always 100% right everything we see hear touch smell taste we think it's always correct all of this research we have all of this science all of this knowledge it's based upon our brains so there's a good chance that it's all wrong and just like elon musk has said himself I think he said there's I can't remember what it was something like a, a 0.1 percent chance that we're not living in a simulation actually I think the, the percentage percentage was far less than that I can't remember it right now if you search it on YouTube or Google, I'm sure you will see it. Elon Musk said that himself. And if you look at it, it makes perfect sense. That this could all just be a simulation. Because everything is just interpreted by our brains. And we all agree on it. That's what makes it seem real. 
And if someone doesn't agree with it, they might end up in a mental institution, the label's crazy. Or maybe we should listen to those people who are having these hallucinations. Because maybe what they're interpreting and perceiving is actually what's real. As scary as that sounds. But despite that, even though, yes, this may all just be a simulation, I am convinced. But behind it, I mean, obviously, simulation or not, behind that is our creator, whoever that may be. Behind that is a God. And it may not be the God that we think it is. Who knows who this God could be? I would hope that it's a loving God. It could be a God that just built this world and once it was built, he just didn't really care after that. Because there's a lot of suffering, poverty, hunger. It seems that when this world, this universe was originally built, it took a lot of care. A lot of thoughts went into that, into building the original processes behind it. But then later on, it seemed as though it's experienced a lot of neglect. I'm not criticizing gods. I mean, I still have my faith. And also based on the things that I've experienced and that I've researched and the truth that I found within myself, I do believe that there is something positive after this life, something good. If there wasn't, why is it all about corrupting us, isolating the chosen ones, making them look like they're crazy, they're bad people? maybe it really is all a test as it's been said for thousands of years if not more it's a test of our belief despite what people do what they try to drag us into we continue to believe we continue to do good really seems that that's what it comes down to. Our beliefs create our reality. And that's spirituality as well. And that's often the case with the vibrational scale as well. You've got to have that belief in yourself. That belief in our creator it raises our vibration so for me this all pieces together perfectly when i think about it it all makes perfect sense i guess there is a creator there's something so much greater than this world and we kind of do have to detach from this world not get so caught up in it By realizing that we're not of this world, we're of something so much greater, something so much more. And those of us who sell our souls and we attach to the world, we're going into corruption. We're sacrificing something so much greater after this life. For what? Just for a few decades? 
of something that might be good in this world but even then once you've sold your soul you can't even enjoy that anyway it's not a good deal it should be pretty obvious done I mean just do good no matter who you are what part of the world you're from just do righteous deeds support people encourage them along the right path do not engage in corruption Is it too late for some of you? Honestly, I don't know the answer to that. I do believe that a lot of people, we need to get around chosen ones, empaths. They're going to be a great influence for you. And have faith, whether it's in the church, some of you it may be Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, just have something. But also be aware that narcissists are in religions as well. And they may be there trying to manipulate you, to lead you along the wrong path, to corrupt you, to smear you, alienate you. I mean, that should be a sign as well. If someone's targeting you in the church, in the mosque, in the temple, they're trying to corrupt you, they're trying to alienate you, smear you. If that's not the work of the devil, I don't know what is. And actually, I think if you look into the religious books, it should reveal that to you as well. Because they are hypocrites. Potentially, yes, they don't really believe. Whether they know it or not, I mean, sometimes it could be unconsciously as well, because remember, they're of a low consciousness. They may not even know that they've sold their souls. They may not know that they're evil. They may not know that what they're doing is wrong. But whether or not they know it or not, it's what they're doing. because you've got to look at it like narcissism it's characterized by denial without denial it cannot exist so they're in denial and maybe that's what it is maybe a lot of these demons they are in denial they just want to accept it because of their pride their arrogance their superiority I actually like these <clears throat> these high-rise apartments because it gives a good view of the city and I do like the buildings although honestly if you look into it as well these cities they're not good they promote dysfunction and being caught up in these um, these built-up environments where everything's close together that can create schizophrenia in a person it can cause a mental illness I mean when you look at it this is the matrix these cities it's the matrix and as Dr. Ramani said, 
she said in cities especially over 50% of the population there is likely to be narcissistic and when you look at these apartment buildings what does it remind you of you remember that scene in the matrix all of those pods I mean we're not meant to live in these little boxes and it's funny but when you see these um, these images these representations of like Armageddon or the apocalypse what does it always show it always shows like destruction to the cities I don't know I'm just brainstorming I'm just thinking about really the first things that come to my head and maybe it will relate to someone out there but yeah there's the studies there's research behind all of this the psychology the science these cities are not good they are very unhealthy if you're living in a city right now the best thing you can do if you want to feel good if you want to raise the vibes go out into nature if you can just take some time out Go for a hike in the woods, go to a beach, and just see how you feel after that, or you will feel a lot better, as long as you're not a narcissist, because narcissists, they're not really into that too much, unless they can use it as part of their image. Just like Dr. Ramani said, all the narcissists are in these cities. This is where you will find them and maybe this is why it doesn't feel so good for us as well and I'm not hating on cities I mean just look at my Instagram you'll see I, I have spent a lot of time in cities myself some of the major cities in the world I'm always taking pictures of course I, I love the buildings the skyscrapers I can appreciate that the work that went into building them but then at the same time it isn't healthy it's really not and you just got to think of the poverty just outside the cities people are struggling and yet they go out onto the street they see these skyscrapers I mean, just the injustice the inequality in this world is unbelievable I mean I bet there's people down there probably haven't got enough money for dinner tonight and then what got like billions of dollars worth of skyscrapers here but most people are brainwashed they didn't even think about it like this I bet some of the people who live here they're not even looking at it like oh we can even barely afford to survive to raise our families our kids but hold on there's billions of dollars right there there's enough money for us all to live a comfortable life to have enough money to eat for generations it's sad but that's exactly how it is but if you think this way if you realize it if you see it you're one of those people who's going to be targeted because most people aren't looking at it that way but this is how it is if everything was balanced 
fair, equal. And I don't mean everything, everyone should just be given a handout. If we at least have somewhat of an equal start, fair chance of succeeding, where we put in the work, things will be a lot different in this world. And it's sad how things are. There could be a far better system. Of course, I'm against people just giving a hand out. People just giving everything on a plate. I mean, that that's exactly what we're talking about on here. That is narcissism. We're all human. We're born with abilities, qualities that we can work on, that we can improve. And we should use that. To come to this world and not do that, to me that is evil. Being blessed with our bodies, with our brains, we should use them. If you don't use them, I doubt you still expect the handout. To me that that is demonic. Then at the same time, some people are disabled. For those people, to me, whether it's a mental disability or physical disability, they deserve extra, extra support. They do, because that's not their fault. Yeah, be careful when you talk about these things. Because these types of things, when you talk about it, it could get you targeted. People don't want to hear about it. You're just triggering them to reflect on how they don't care about anything. They only care about themselves. They don't want to be reminded of that. Yeah, I'm out here. Anyway, that's it for this video. And a very deep one. Lots to think about. Hope you enjoyed it I hope it resonated with you and if it did please hit the thumbs up button down below it's how you can contribute to this channel to our community and also I welcome your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions. You are free to express what you think about this. As long as it's not offensive or insulting to anyone. Let us know. Drop a comment down below. Hit subscribe, click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to show your support to our community, you can donate by leaving a super chat in the live chat, a super thanks in the comment section, or by going to my PayPal, it is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. And if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website, it is narcsurvivor.co.uk And you can follow me on Instagram, it's narcsurvivor YouTube. Thank you all for joining me on another 
live video. I do appreciate you all. And I look forward to talking with you again in another live video.